Today we're going to make some crazy hair self-portraits. First, let's read a story. Melissa's Magical Hair I like my hair. Really, I do. But sometimes I wonder... What if I could change it to my favorite color? If my hair was full of magical powers... I might turn it into a pile of flowers. What if I lived underwater, swimming wild and free? I could have hair made of green seaweed. I like the idea of hair made from nature. Maybe a dew made of lightning and thunder? Then when the thunderstorm has passed through, I could rock a rainbow hairdo. What if I lived in a castle and sat on a throne? My hair would be full of jewels and gemstones. Maybe a head full of homes in the city? Or perhaps a litter of sweet patterned kitties? When my mind comes up with creative ideas, light bulbs flicker, bursting for freedom. Pencils and paper? Paint and a glue stick for all of those times I'm feeling artistic. Joy fills me when I make art. Love bursts out like a head full of hearts. When it's quiet around me, I need an audio reward. For that I would need a head full of musical chords. Let's try something daring and wild. A beehive with honey could be just my style. Since my favorite colors are green and blue, peacock feathers would be fantastic too. Wouldn't it be nice to have a head full of things that are sweet? Like donuts? Or cupcakes? Or an ice cream treat? If that were the case, it would need a good wash and a rinse. A head full of suds would be pure bliss. The possibilities are endless, like a vast, unknown galaxy. But I think we all can agree. Although I like each unique style, I'll just stay me for a while. Now it's your turn to make your own crazy hair self-portrait. Today we're going to start part one of our crazy hair self-portraits. You will need a pencil, a black sharpie, and a piece of paper. We will not be filling in our portraits with color until part two of this project. However, if you want to fill in your portrait with watercolor, with paint, or adding water to your markers, you are going to want some thicker paper. If you do not have those supplies at home, any paper will be just fine. Okay, boys and girls, to get started, we are going to use a pencil to lightly draw the bottom of your head. You can do a U shape, you can do a V shape, it doesn't matter to me, but you're only going to do the bottom, not the top of your head, because that's where we're going to put the shape or picture that you choose for your hair. So all you need is the bottom, you're going to need a nose, and your eyes. Now, you can do your eyes any way you want. If you want them open, make them open. If you want them closed like they were in the book, that's fine. I'm going to do this one open. Eyes are an ellipse shape. An ellipse kind of looks like a lemon or a football. One curved line up, like a hill, and one curved line down, like a valley. Then 
you can choose to include an eyelid, which is another curved line very close to the top. And if you want eyelashes, those would come out of your eyelid. You can do eyelashes or you can choose not to. Your iris, which is the colorful part of your eye, is very large inside of your eye. It's a big circle that touches the top and the bottom. And then in the middle of your iris is your pupil. You can include eyebrows and a mouth. If you just want a smile, that's fine. If you would like to include lips, then after you have your lip line, you can include a top lip and a bottom lip. If you want to create your face in a different way, that's completely up to you and absolutely fine. Give yourself a neck and whatever you want to have yourself wearing. You can close up your neckline to make the top of a collar and then shoulders. Now, if you want to include something that you're wearing, I say go for it. Now is the time to decide what you would like to do for your crazy hair. You could choose an idea that you saw in the book, or here I have some pop art patterns. Pop art is pictures of popular things that you see all the time. Some of these ideas are pretty fun, and some of them we even saw in the book. Um, if you have your own idea, that's completely fine. But here is a few that you could pause the screen and take a look at to see if you can draw them and repeat them again and again to make your crazy hair. Now, before you start with your selection for your crazy hair do, um, we want to think about exactly how big you want this to be. So I want you to almost make yourself a really thin line for about how high you think the top of your head would be. Now, I'm doing this um, very lightly because I'm going to need to erase that later. But at least that gives me an idea of where I should be, like how high I should be putting my pictures. Now, I have these really fun ideas here that I could use or I could come up with my own, but I'm really liking these watermelons. So I'm going to start by the line by my face where we stopped drawing. And I'm going to make one on the other side too. And then I know I need to go somewhere around here and above to create my hairdo so that it's replacing what would be my actual hair with watermelons. Now, as soon as I start, I want to think about overlapping. That means that one picture is on top and one is on the bottom. One is in front, one is behind. That's overlapping. So I can make my watermelons and I can change their direction to make them look more interesting. I don't have to have them all the, the exact same. I want some variety. Now I can also think about changing size. Maybe some are going to be much bigger slices. Um, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want them all to be the same size. Some maybe I can see a lot of and some maybe not as much. I want somewhere I barely see any of it, but I don't want that big gap back there. And also, when you do finally get a little bit more up here, you are going to want to put a little bit further down too. Um, something that shows there is some hair behind your head too. 
Um, however you want to get that on there is kind of up to you. Maybe I'm going to have the bottom of one right here and here. The more you stick on there, the fuller this is going to look. You don't want there to be big gaps between um, your shapes because it's going to look like you have bald spots. So <laughs> make sure that you really, really fill and consider opposite directions like that one's going to be upside down. Now, once you look at this and you think, OK, now that looks like, you know, if I was drawing real hair, it would be up that high. And then um, I saved my details for last because um, I wanted to get all of the shapes on it before I started all of that. And now I'm going to erase that little ghost line I made because I don't need that in there anymore. And then I can go ahead and do my details. When you have your entire drawing like you want it and the only thing that's left to do is color it, that's when it's time to first outline your pencil lines with Sharpie. Boys and girls, that is the last step that you need to complete for today. We will continue this project in part two of Crazy Hair Self-Portraits. <laughs>